Oh, Lord, make me a woman so I can put a demon in me and kick a whole lot of ass. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking about Claymore. That's right. Claymore the manga. That's right. If anybody ever gives you any static for reading comic books or manga, you just send them down to my channel so I can say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Yeah, alright, so I'm getting carried away, but the thing is, you know, I'm here for the struggling and the slow, man, and this is the stuff for you. I swear, when I was little, I couldn't read a book, but I could read the hell out of some comics. These things will really help you. They, of course, they have visual aids, but they have a very fast pace, you know what I mean? They're not very long. You can accomplish them, and you can feel accomplished at the end, you know? It's, it's a great way to start. Not only that... There's plenty of visuals and stuff in here that you can kind of take over into other fantasy books or, you know, dark fantasy and stuff. I've done that before, you know, when having a hard time with your imagination. You can always pull from things like this, and Claymore has got it all. So, all right. So Claymore was written and illustrated by Norihiro Yagi. Uh, publication started in 2001, went all the way to 2014. And it ran 27 volumes. So when it, where it starts is on a continent that's basically closed off from everywhere else. So it's very mysterious. All the cities and towns that are spread, off, uh, spread across the continent are being plagued by demons called Yoma. Now, Yoma can mess everything up fast. They can devour a city really quick. So the people have no choice but to pay these large sums to a strange and mysterious group called the organization. Now the organization will send in their claymores. Their claymores will come in, dispatch the Yoma, and so the town can kind of go back to business as usual. Uh, the claymores often are called the silver-eyed witches because of their appearance, but also, I mean, these are uh, people with demon flesh infused into their body. They're like half human, part, or you know, they got some demon in them. Our protagonist of the series is Claire. Now, Claire is a very stoic lady. Uh, she is ranked 47th amongst the Claymores, and you'll kind of figure out what that means later on in the series. So, in the beginning, the organization assigns Claire to go to a village and dispatch of a Yoma. While there, Claire discovers a young boy named Rocky. Now, Rocky has just lost his entire family to Yoma, and this pulls at a certain heartstring of Claire's, and she ultimately lets Rocky tag along as her cook. Now, this seems silly because Claymores don't really eat. They don't really sleep. But Claire's taken a liking to Rocky, and so now they've kind of become attached to the hip. And from here is where they kind of go out, and there's... I mean, it just... It happens quick from here. I don't really know how to far to go into this summary because I'm talking about 27 volumes and trying not to spoil. So, how about this? Let's just go to the, what we got. We got demons, guts, and gore. We got what has to be a Guinness record for severed limbs. Uh, a wide variety of special abilities, talents, and hairstyles, um, abyssal monsters, failed experiments, black cards of mercy, 47 ladies that are always ranked and ready, and just a whole lot of badassery. Now, I don't even, I don't even know if I can say that that was even scratching the surface, because there's just so much in this series. I just don't want to give anything away. And literally, every step of the way is just something new, because this is a very mysterious series. Uh, Norihiro Yagi didn't, he had an idea for the story, but he just wrote it as, it, as he went. And he really wanted to keep it just as natural as he could be as it grew and really the, the story it really did grow <laughs> so the tone let's talk about the tone right the tone of the book 
is grimdark. It's a grimdark ass continent. We got demons, half demon ladies, swords chopping everything off. You got just a lot of dark stuff. It's very dystopian. It's very there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of agony going on. I mean, this thing is just pure grimdark, and it's done very well. Uh, something. I mean, just. I mean, it should go saying that it's grimdark, but I mean, if you haven't gotten the point, this is a very adult series, you know, um, if you don't know, <laughs> I mean, like, especially in the fantasy genre of anime or manga, you're going to see a lot of nudity, you know, and there's plenty of, there's plenty of titties and all that stuff in, in, in this series. Uh, it's done pretty tastefully, if you ask me, it's not done like, like crazy hentai, you know, tentacle dongs uh, nah yeah I mean it, it's done pretty well you know what I mean uh, and it makes sense I mean if there's a gigantic you know demonic you know lady that's a, the size of a house who's tailoring her clothes nobody you know what I mean so just let it be you know what I mean it's alright I know that I normally talk about the pace of books and stuff but and maybe it's not a given so let's just talk about it real quick uh, the pace is fast. I mean, anytime you get into some comic book or manga that's got, you know, action based, you know, it's, it's quick. I don't even really know if I know a slow comic or, or manga. It's, it's built to be fast. It's, you know, there's a lot and there's, there's visual aids and there's not like an entire page of writing. There's just little blots and blots of writing. So, I mean, you can smoke through these really quick and, but try not to, because there's a lot underneath the surface, you know? These things are just killer, man. How about the characters? You know, I've had a lot of heard a lot of critiques about the characters being like very cooker cookie cutter. Like they all look the same, you know, or whatever. They're all the same. They're just a bunch of chicks out there kicking ass. And that is not the case. Uh there is plenty of ways to tell these girls apart, and there's also reasons why they look the same. Um I think that Yagi does do a okay job of, of explaining why they all have similar appearance you know when the when they go through the transformation of combining demon flesh to their own it, the result is what makes them kind of look similar as well as their outfits they all work for the organization so they they wear the organization outfit but besides that man they all have a very unique hairstyles and they all have their own symbol as well so I mean there's ways to tell them apart um, and you know, people make fun of that, the hairstyle thing, but it's like, dude, it's not that, it's really not that hard. And, and this is how you're going to tell them apart, especially when stuff gets, starts going crazy. But it's just like, you know, well, who's the girl with the bob cut? Helen. Who's the girl with the Prince Valiant page boy thing? That's Claire. Who's the girl with the dreadlocks? Oh, that's Renee. Oh, who's the girl with the <laughs> My Chemical Romance emo thing? That's Cassandra. <laughs> who's the girl with the Goku spikes? That's Rachel. It's, it's not that hard. So... Um, the other thing is, is you're not looking close enough if you can't tell these women apart, not just by their appearance, but man, that by they, they might all be claymores and they might all kind of, most of them are pretty stoic, but man, they all have their own personalities. They all have their own struggles. They all have their own pains. And that comes out throughout the series. And that's one of the fun things about this is you have these, these women that are just, you know, killing machines. They have been, you know, adopted and raised to be brutal. But they are also fragile. They also, you know, they have weaknesses, you know. And I think anybody that's been in a struggle can find one of these characters to relate to. I know I, right here, Helen, I relate to her. I mean, she's just kind of a fool that runs head, head first into things without even thinking about it. She can kind of be a little bit of a bully and stuff. And, I mean, there's that's the thing. It's like... Uh, the struggles in these are these these books this series is it's like right in your face so if you like i said if you've been a personal struggle i have personally faced a lot of inner demons and i can really get behind what these girls are going through and what they do for a living the stuff is just awesome i mean in all in all reality the manga i should have been really into was berserk and i'm not saying i'm not it's just like on paper berserk looks like it was tailor made for a guy like me um but uh, Claymore is what I found and fell in love with. If you're a person that really needs everything to be buttoned up and solved and taken care of by the end of a series, you will probably get a little frustrated because, like I said, with uh, Yagi just kind of writing it as he went, 
there's still there leaves a lot of uh, loose ends in the end. For me, it didn't it didn't matter. I mean, I just I thought the story was beautiful, the characters were beautiful, the action was amazing, the tone, everything about this was like five star for me. I don't rate stuff, but you know what I mean. Uh, if I did, it'd be five stars for sure. This is why this is why you know I'm trying to get this to you because I I think that if if you're into dark fantasy, grim dark stuff. And you're ha having a hard time reading books. This is what you you can go to, and you will have so much fun going through these pages. You'll get stuck. I would say my one of the cons, the only con, my only con about this whole deal is how hard it is to find the books. Um, at my local comic shop, I found a couple volumes. Uh, eventually, I went to the internet, and uh, that's where I found the box set. So I had luck on the internet. Uh, it's, you know, but th they can be spendy, so that's got to be a con, right? I mean, you don't want to spend, you know, more than a couple hundred bucks. You know, this, I think, was 200 I don't know. I can't remember, but either way, it's a lot of money. Maybe you don't have that much money, you know, for, you know, some books or whatever. Um, but the box set's beautiful. This series is great. When I got this, um, I turned into Derek Zoolander when I got this, like Derek Zoolander at a computer. I just tore open the top because I couldn't figure out how to get into it. And it was like, oh, you can't. I was like, why would they make such a beautiful box and not make a way to get into it? And then months later, uh, I was moving the box and I could uh, hear this. What? Oh, no. Oh. There was a Velcro door the whole time. <sighs> this is why. I I cannot have nice things, but I've accepted that a long time ago. Um, anyway, I do want to say something. I have a couple volumes lying around because I, I bought it from the comic shop. If I could find somebody that was really genuinely interested, I would consider mailing some copies. Um, just because I love this series so much and I would love to share it with anybody that's like really willing to get into it. And that, you know, preferably somebody that's struggling, you know, with getting into books. So... Uh, just let me know in the comments. I have no idea how fast, I, I mean, this will all happen, honestly, but uh, I am definitely willing to, to look into it and to do it uh, for somebody that's interested. Uh, let me think. Anything else? Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I could scream about this series forever. Uh, I tr There's a lot I didn't talk about because I want it to be a surprise. Every step of the way was, was, uh, was a pleasure in this series. I... Don't know if, I mean, realistically, I didn't even, like, go and, pit, like, look at Berserk, because this, this, like, this just, ah, man, it's so good. Norihiro Yagi, salute you. Thumbs up from this channel. That's right. All right, guys. Later.